today and get someone on your side. Again, thanks to Norm MacDonald for joining us backstage for the late show here in Southern California at uh, CBS Television City. And I'm joined now by one of Letterman's great friends and one of my great friends, uh, Don Rickles, who is known to all of you. Uh, he entertains around the world, has been in movies and on television, and is one of Dave's favorites, as I say, back at the Ed Sullivan Theater in New York. Didn't have to fly to New York today, did you? Nah, and it's good to be back with you, Tom. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Because, Arp. you know, you handle it great. Dave's a little weak at what he does, but <laughs> you're the best, you know. With Dave, I need trouble, Don. Thanks you know, a million. There were some stories that you wanted to take over the show permanently, but you didn't know how to pull the plug at a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Which was kind of cute. You've been saving that now for how long? Weeks, huh? No, I saw two nurses in the hall going, he's trying to pull the plug. <laughs> I, uh, the times I've seen you there now and again, he'll try and coax you into telling a story that will get you in trouble. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things, you know, like the time Frank, for example, came over to our house when I told Dave once, you know, and beat up my mother. But it was just to relax him, you know. And uh, Could you have told that story or made that joke when Sinatra was alive? <laughs> yes, I could, but my family would be missing. <laughs> I want you to now uh, tell us uh, a good story, a favorite story of yours about uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, first of all, as you know, he was a great man, and there'll only be, there'll never be another Frank. He was a legend, and I loved him dearly. He was a great man. And he was... Uh, But, you know, there was another side to Frank. We worked Radio City, the last tour together, mm -hmm. and everybody said, uh, said uh, what was Frank really like? You know, and I'd come backstage and say, Frank, I'm going on. And, and he, my, I thought my name for a long time was Get Out of the Way. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> you see, you're laughing. That joke could hurt my family. <laughs> I got an aunt in the Bronx now. I'll never see her again. I know that. <laughs> No, I make jokes about Frank with the, I know. With the gangsters and sure. all that. It was all baloney. When, they, when I opened my opening night with him, no, nah, whenever I opened, mm -hmm. they all sat there and went, hey, yeah, bravo, bravo, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought they were horse. <laughs> they were choking on gunpowder. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> anyway uh, I was working, uh, well, he was at the Sands at the time, and I was working at the Sahara, and, I came over one night in my single days and... What year is this? What are we talking about? Uh, in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. You heard about the 60s. Yes, I did. <laughs> you know, every time I talk to you, I get the feeling you're going to report me to somebody. <laughs> well, I could. It's like a checkup, you I know? Could. I could. I could if I it's wanted to. to be like a... I'm not going like to. Like a Regis just like Philbin, an annoying kind of personality. <laughs> it's, you know it's right? fine. <laughs> hey, for the money you're paying, I can say whatever I want. <laughs> Regis is a friend of mine, and he's annoying. Now, listen. Now, now you, mentioned, you mentioned... I want you to finish this story about yeah. Frank. The oh, first yeah. time right. he saw you work. Yeah. Well, the first... Oh, the first time he saw mm -hmm. me... No. He saw me... We were in the sands one night, and I was with this girl. The first mm -hmm. time he ever saw me work, you know, I, I said to him, Frank, which nobody ever did before. Mm -hmm. I said, Frank, stand up, be yourself, hit somebody. Right. And uh, <laughs> pretty much the audience did what they did here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the guys with him went, That's a funny line, eh? <laughs> And then he laughed, and then I knew they weren't going to hurt my family. But uh, the idea was I was sitting in the sands, and he came, and I was with this girl, lovely girl. What was her name? Have, uh, uh, Linda. Linda. <laughs> I'll, I'll need it for the report. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's nice when the host gets off a good one once in a while. <laughs> David, anyway, she, she came over. I, I, I was sitting with her, and she's going, do you know Frank Sinatra? And I'm mm -hmm. making it sure. I said, oh, sweetheart, I'm getting a personal friend of mine, which I knew who he was, mm -hmm. but, you know, and he's sitting there with a bunch of people, and he's got security all around. And I said, and it's in this cocktail lounge, and the violins are playing, and everybody, and the waiters are tinkling, and Frank's there going, summer wind. <laughs> and the wind goes by, and the broads are going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> summer wind. And I'm at the other table, and I'm, I, in those days I was smoking, I was missing my mouth with the puffs. <laughs> and she said, and I knew if Frank came over, it's a definite score for the big guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. And in those days, the big guy, oh boy, it was a lot of throbbing going on, a lot of throbbing. <laughs> so, so I was sitting there, David, and I went... image of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, his name is Eddie. <laughs> uh, uh, so... <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> anyway, David, so I went over and I said, Frank, if you could come over for a couple of minutes and just say hello to the girl, it would mean a lot to me. It, it would help me out. Sure. He says, yeah. you got it, kid. You got it. And the violins are playing, and she's saying, oh, to you, my darling, we had a little champagne. Mm. Boom. And I'm missing my mouth. It's running down, you know, into, yeah. into the underwear and ice and Eddie. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm sitting there. <laughs> Is this too fast for no, you? it's fine. It's anyway, fine. Uh, you're sitting there like you're the Monsignor in, in Chicago or something. <laughs> anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm turning around, and I'm, I'm, I'm having a drink, and he comes over, and he says, Hey, Don, it's good to see you. And with the violence playing, and I get up, right? The I go, not now, Frank. Can't you see I'm with people? <laughs> How do I know if your album's going to sell? Uh, Leave me alone. <laughs> Didn't you have a big dinner with Dave at the, uh, at the famous restaurant in yeah, New York? Yeah, then I the, said, the, the joke was, it became, I said, my wife Barbara and I, who he kept calling Margie. How is Margie? <laughs> Margie was a hooker I knew when I was single. <laughs> but uh, I said, no, Barbara and I, he said, I said, why, why, why don't we go out to dinner? Well, you know, Don, uh, well, we, sure, we could. You know how he sits back and does his pencil trick, which is so stupid that, you know, it makes a lot of money. You gotta, and the audience watches. Look at that, he did a pencil trick. Anyway, so uh, he said, I said, what about uh, dinner? Dinner, yeah. No, nah, yeah, well, I'll try. Finally, I embarrassed him into it. That's pretty much what happened. Anyway, but it was very sweet of him, and I, and I appreciate it, and I thanked him, and he sent me one of those uh, cheap jackets that he has. <laughs> you know, the thing with the, the, the yeah, foot like, pants, and <laughs> pants your foot, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> or try on my shorts, or whatever. It's all over the jacket. You can't wear it any place. You go out in the street, they, they think you're a tailor. <laughs> try on my pants, you know. <laughs> the ABC Warehouse, Washington first. Royal Caribbean. It's disappointing. John McCain promised to stop running a negative campaign. Two days later, he attacked Governor Bush on national television with false charges on campaign finance. Governor Bush supports comprehensive reform that would outlaw foreign, corporate, and union money to political parties. Senator McCain, five times he voted to use your taxes to pay for political campaigns. That's not real reform. Governor Bush will devote the surplus to priorities, a strong military, education, social security, and tax cuts. Before we close, you know, you've given Dave a pretty good going over tonight. Have you got anything straight you want to say to Mr. Letterman? Well, I don't want to spoil Dave. You know, you start to, sh <laughs> start to show him kindness, he's liable to want to come over to the house. <laughs> but, uh, Dave, there you go again. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, that, that's, that's what it's all about. He's the first one to laugh, and if he isn't, I'll have to get over it. Yeah. <laughs> but, Dave, I wish you the best. You know that, and uh, you'll be back on the air, and everybody's going to dine to see you again, and have your good health, and hang in there because you're... You're a damn good performer and a, and a good friend. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks for being with us tonight, Mr. Rickles. And, and Tom, if I may say, you are special, too. Thank you for, for your kindness. Don't start it up, okay? No. <laughs> Let, let's have lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Try to find me, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> My thanks also to Norm MacDonald for joining us tonight. And don't forget, Dave is back on the air here on CBS next Monday night on the 21st. I'm Tom Snyder for Dave. Thank you all for watching. Craig Kilborn is next. And from The Late Show in Los Angeles, good night, everybody. Good night, Dave. Ha, ha, ha.